What's up, sisters and friends? Welcome back to the Sisters and Friends podcast. Happy Monday, everybody. Hope your week is starting off so good. It's about to get better because I have one of my close friends on the podcast. Her name is Elise. She is a gem. She is um, an angel, y'all. This girl's awesome, and she has a story to tell. We're going to be talking a lot about what it looks like to wait on God, what it looks like for God to be faithful even when you can't see it, all the things. And I know so many of you in your life right now are waiting on something. Maybe you're praying for something and you are not seeing the thing that you're praying for. God's not doing maybe what you expected him to do. Man, this conversation is for you. So go ahead, text it to all your sisters and friends, and we'll go ahead and get started. But Elise, I'm so excited that you're willing to share your story with everybody because I've gotten to have a front row seat for the past, what, two years? Yep. And it has been like a joy as a friend to get to see you walk this out. Um, it's been hard mm-hmm. in certain times. It's been a time of rejoicing in other times times but I'm so thankful you get to tell your story it's awesome I'm so excited to be here yeah you've been through the the highs and the lows the good and the yes. bad one of yes. my hardest waiting seasons but yes um, for I'm sure so excited that we get to do this now and share it it's gonna be awesome so for a little bit of context and we'll get to this part later but Elise and I became friends whenever I moved back from Nashville and we were kind of really looking for friends um y'all were so sweet to us and really our first friends we made here Christian mm-hmm. and Luke are like mm-hmm. bros like <laughs> they work out together every Saturday yes. me and Elise don't make it to the workout <laughs> train but we've become sweet friends and you joined a Bible study that I was doing at the time, and you really opened up to us about what you were waiting on, mm-hmm. which we'll get to later. But the waiting season of your life, um, it hasn't just been a season. It seems to be like multiple times in your life. Yes. And so let's just talk about that, because so many people are waiting on the Lord, and I've had so many people ask me questions. Sadie, what do you do while you're waiting? Mm-hmm. And no one better to answer this than you, who has been so open about talking about that with people so let's go all the way back when did you first discover that you were in a waiting season with the Lord absolutely um gosh I feel like it's been throughout my whole life but um my first waiting season was in junior high I would say um and that is a waiting season that I would say I'm still in Mm -hmm. um I think that there's a lot of waiting seasons that are you know, resolved and answered and the the prayers get answered and then there's some that you're still waiting on yeah um but I will say that just because they don't get answered the way that you want doesn't mean God's not answering them. Yep. That's something that I've learned. And so it kind of goes back and forth. Some that were answered, some that were not. But my first one is one I'm still in um, with my mom. Hmm. My mom is my best friend. and oh, um, She's so sweet. She is awesome. Uh, and I remember when I was probably 14, we were at my nanny's house, which is my mom's mom. And I overheard them talking, and she hmm. said, uh, we can just get you a wig um, if your hair falls wow. out. And I had no clue anything that my mom was even sick, that anything was wrong. Um, wow. But that's when I figured out that she was sick. Um, and I entered into this season of waiting because, one, I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want mm-hmm. her to know that I had heard it. And two, um, I didn't really know what was going on. I was waiting to see, like, is she sick? Is she dying? Is it cancer? Wow. Is it what? Um, so that was the first time that I entered a season of the unknowns. Mm. Um, and I bring that up because that's one that's still kind of going on. We mm. ended up finding out she has lupus and she has this, you know, autoimmune disorder. Wow. Um, and so just walking through that with someone who is your best friend and the mm. person you confide in, like, it's really scary, but, um, I've seen God's faithfulness through that mm. so many times. Awesome. Um, something that I've seen through God, um, or through the waiting season is God winks. And, mm. One of the God winks that I had actually came years and years later. Um, whenever I found this out, I was 14, like I said. Wow. And she's had her highs, her lows, her ups, her downs. There was times where they thought she wasn't even going to make it. Mm. Um, but then uh, I guess it was a couple years ago, we went to this church event together. Mm. And so this is my first God wink. I'll tell lots of them. I talk about God winks. I love the God winks. Yeah. Like God winks for people who aren't in church. God winks are like little things that you know are from the Lord. Yeah. They can be all different types of things. And you assert like, I love your God winks. And so you're going to get to really see what yeah. this is. And if you've never had a God wink before, just hold out. Pray yes. for that. Seek that. And gosh, when you have the eyes to see, you'll see it. Absolutely. I didn't know they were God winks until a long time later. So That's I call awesome. them that now. But before I just... That's awesome. there, crazy moments but um we were at an event and one day we were we were worshiping and my mom was at the event and um I just felt this urge to pray like super strongly like God just relieve my mom of her pain she has pain every single day of her mm. life wow and I was just praying so boldly I was like you know what I'm not just gonna ask I'm gonna say like God I know you will do this yeah 
Um, and so we are singing and the song ends and all of a sudden I see my mom walk to the front, which she is not a person that goes and talks in front of people. Wow. And she asks for the microphone and I'm like, what is Whoa. going on? And she, um, as she gets the microphone, she says, I just have to share this. This is crazy. She said, for the first time in years, she said, I don't have any pain in my body. Wow. And she said her hands, like usually she can't close them all the way just because like her joints have problems too. And she could like open and close them. Like wow. that morning she couldn't even open her water bottle. I had to help her. And then all of a sudden she could do all the things. And wow. it was so cool. It was for the whole entire day. Um, but then the next day she did go back to feeling how she did. Wow. But instead of me being like, man, God, you know, why didn't you answer that? Like, I thought yeah. you were going to take the pain away. Yeah. I was able to see like, God was just showing me like, I can and wow. I had the ability to do that, but it's just not the time. Yeah. But he gave me that hope and he gave me that That's glimpse of so like, cool. I'm there. So this is like one wow. of the first times I was like, man, just because God isn't answering the prayer, like maybe he didn't take it all away from her. Maybe yeah. she isn't just miraculously healed. He did give me this sign that he's there and that he's working awesome. and moving. And if when he wants to do it, he can. That's awesome. Um, and it's really cool too, because for those who don't know you, like you don't go to a super charismatic church. No. Like, like, so that's not like a thing. Like people aren't like, and there's healing in here and no. here and here. So for God to do that, and I just want to make that point, because I think a lot of people think, well, like God only heals in those certain yeah. situations or certain areas, but God is the healer. Yeah. So wherever he is, healing can happen. But even if he doesn't heal, that doesn't mean that he's not a healer. Right. And I, I was just listening to Bill Johnson wife just passed away mm-hmm. from cancer and yeah. um he preached two days later and it's the most incredible sermon and he said just because god didn't heal my wife who am i to question him as a healer yeah. and i was like that Absolutely. is so good like just because he doesn't do it in the way that you think doesn't mean it takes away the nature of who he is right. and he showed y'all a glimpse of like i can do this yeah. it's just like shirat meshach and abendoka their their faith was so awesome like you can do this you're yeah. able to do this but even if you don't you're still God. Yeah. And I love that. You Absolutely. can see your faith in that so clearly. It's awesome. That's something I'm I'm learning so much because even still, like, I think a lot of times people can ask, well, why do bad things happen? Like, mm-hmm. you know, why does God let these things happen? And I always go back to Exodus and I go back to Moses and the, you know, Israelites and Pharaoh and, you know, so many times with the plagues, there's all these plagues that were happening mm-hmm. and these are terrible things and people are yep. dying and yep. that just seems harsh because yeah. you're like, God, couldn't you just take that away? Couldn't you just let the, uh, the people go? Yeah. Um, but what I love about that part is that it keeps repeating over and over. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, mm. but it's so that God could be glorified and his yep. wonders could be made known. And so sometimes God's just setting us up for a moment to be able to show his wonder and his wow, glory. That's good. You know, like, show what he's done through this season maybe if you didn't go through this season you wouldn't have this story to tell about how good god is and his character and his intentionality it's good so i've just learned like sometimes these things happen we have to get to a point in our life where like is it about me or is it about making god known yeah and if it's about making god known then it's okay like bring it on that's so good um that's so good but that was probably that's probably been the hardest waiting season um, that's continual. Yeah. Um, throughout life, I've had tons of waiting seasons. Friends, high school was hard, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and I think anybody can relate to this. Absolutely. Finding friends is hard, it's especially hard. as a girl. And I think that's good to say because I, I just did something with Jenny Allen recently, and she was asking me about friendships. And I was like, yeah, it's actually been really hard. And this was when I first made her. I was like, yeah. it's been really hard to make friends. So I started this Bible study. She's like, wait, it's hard for you to make friends? I'm like, yeah, like to me, I'm like, why would that be a shock to you? Right. Isn't it hard for everybody? But people really do think certain people, it's not hard for them to make friends. Yeah. And people will look at you. I mean, it, it would be easy for me to look at you and be like, oh, well, you, it wouldn't be hard for you to make friends. You're so beautiful. You were a cheerleader. <laughs> like you just think certain people will have it easy, but it's hard for everybody yeah. to make friends. And so I know you went through that struggle too in high school. Yeah. And then I know the waiting on a boyfriend or a husband. You went through that, which don't we all? What was that? What was that season like? One of my favorite things to do when I have the time is to start my day with a quiet time to read God's word. Now that doesn't always get to happen, but when it does, it changes a lot of stuff. 
because what you fill your mind with matters and especially at the beginning of your day something that I always say is what comes in is what's going to come out and friend you have to make a choice on what you're going to fill your mind with that's why I love the abide app because it gives you that opportunity to start your day in God's word the app gives you daily scripture meditations and things that you can listen to to begin your day strong or in your day strong so whether you're a morning person or not the abide app is easy to use and it's two minute scripture meditations can easily fit into your schedule featuring topics like overcoming anxiety managing stress addiction and recovery finding forgiveness and more so maybe uh, for you it looks like mornings on your lunch break maybe for you or maybe even right before bed abide is the number one christian meditation app and its users report lower levels of stress and anxiety which i think we could all benefit from for a limited time, our listeners will get 25% off a of premium subscription when you visit abide.co slash Sadie. One other thing that it's great about Abide is that it's not just for adults, but they also have bedtime stories for kids too. So today, join the millions of people using Abide from Grammy Award winning singers, church leaders, and other Christians just like you. You can get started now with 25% off of a premium subscription by downloading the Abide app uh, at abide.co slash Sadie. You'll get an additional stories and meditations, premium music, soothing sounds, and more. I personally have loved this app and used it to help my own anxiety decrease when it comes to the nighttime. And so I just know this is going to be a huge help for y'all. So support this show and get 25% off by going to abide.co slash Sadie. That's abide, A-B-I-D-E dot co, C-O slash Sadie to download the Abide app and get 25% off your premium subscription. That was that's a hard one. That's one that I think everybody wants to rush because yep. you just want to feel loved and you want to have that desire and that yep. person, that person that you get to go through and do life with. Yeah. And even sometimes you just want to have that um, person that can pour into you. I yep. know for for times, maybe not even the right ways. When I say that, I mean I wanted somebody to tell me I'm beautiful, and mm-hmm. I wanted somebody that I could post and I could have this, you know relationship that I could show off and make it look like maybe I have things together when I really did not And so it was easy to rush into just these different relationships. Um, uh, some that, you know, led to really bad endings and some that just led to even things that were said that I just couldn't believe, you know, I had someone that told me when we were ending, Mm. um, they're like, you're never going to find someone that doesn't go out, that doesn't party, that doesn't do these Mm. things. Like they straight up told me that to my face. Mm. Basically saying to you, like, what you're waiting on is not going to happen. Yes. Yeah, which can cause so much fear. And right. we've talked about this before that I had someone say something very similar that, you know, you're never going to find someone that could treat you the way I do, yeah. even though the way he treated me was not good. Right. You're never going to find someone who can put up with your lifestyle is what they said. Yeah. My lifestyle is in the lifestyle I didn't choose, but was given to me as having a platform. And like those words spoken, if, if someone's ever spoken a word of you, that can make you have so much fear because you're already scared of the waiting. You're already yeah. scared of the unknown. And then when someone directly speaks to that, and I think like the enemy knows what you're afraid of. Mm-hmm. And I believe like knows exactly what you would need to hear that would just cripple you in fear. And it's those moments that you have to choose to either take the enemy's word yep. or take the Lord's yep. word. And um, you obviously didn't take the enemy's word. You kept moving on. And you have to share about how Luke, your husband now, was kind of like your dream guy. Like, literally. Because I just love this. I just love this story. Yes. I, um, obviously, I kind of just thought that, you know, there's no need to start over. I'm never going to be able to find my dream guy. That's what I was told. So I'm like, okay, that's true. Um, But there was this one guy that I thought was the most beautiful thing in the world like my whole life like I had always seen him and he either had a girlfriend or he was um I just didn't think I could have him but I was like that's the kind of guy I want like Mm -hmm. he would you know post bible verses I'm not saying that means anything but like I would really was like he really was living it out he went to the school I went to and he was a few years older than me and like everyone knew him as like the Christian guy but like who truly lived it yeah so you're right about that he didn't just post (laughs) it he lived it I was like this is what I wish I could have like ah just that's what I would dream of having and um so one day I was at my house and I was, back when I had Twitter, I was on Twitter, and I was just actually creeping his profile at the That's time. That's awesome. And all of a sudden, I get a text message, and it is, it just says, hey, is this Elise? And I was like, yes, who is this? And he said, Luke Albritton. And I literally remember <laughs> running around the house, like, That's screaming. That's so real. That's so I was real. Like, is this real? And, I mean, it was. And he's everything that I hoped he would be, but more. Like, wow. 
the things that I never thought I could have in a guy That's that awesome. I could have missed just by settling, yeah. um, I got in Luke, and he awesome. was my answer prayer. He was the things that I wanted. He's That's not awesome. perfect, but he's he's yeah. a man living for God, and he strives to lead me to the Lord every yeah. single day. Um, but the thing is, I could have missed that. Yeah. You know, if I would have rushed into something, or if I would have settled and stayed in the relationship that I was in, that was telling me I couldn't have these mm-hmm. things, I never would have got to get to this point where I got that's to right. what God had in store for me. That's right. Um, and that's such a good point because sometimes you literally have to, because you could have had a different relationship, yeah. and you could have had the person that you post with, and you could have had the person, but like you knew that wasn't the best. Right. That that wasn't God's best for you. No. You know, not that that guy he he can go on and get God's best for him, but like that was not God's best for you, and you had to intentionally step away from something that was known yeah. to a place that was unknown and so sometimes that waiting time and that unknown is literally necessary to get to you to where you're going yeah. so it's not always a bad thing yeah. it's, it's actually not a bad thing it's a necessary thing yes and I think a lot of people it's like you so don't want the waiting that you um, avoid the waiting but the waiting is necessary to get you where you're going Absolutely. it's like even if you're going to the doctor like you got to wait in the waiting room to get to the yeah. doctor but if you don't go to the waiting room then you never get healed right so it's like you have to there that is a necessary part of the healing process or of the journey of life Absolutely. and what I love about your story and we'll, we'll get to this in a second with with something that you were just waiting on uh, obviously we can see the <laughs> Lord has Lord has answered yes. we'll get to that for those who are listening um, Elise is pregnant and she yes. is the cutest pregnant person <laughs> pop on over to YouTube to see her cuteness but um but before I even go there one thing I want to point out that is so cool about you and you're going to talk about this in your story but your mom isn't totally healed yet, but yet you're still like praising the Lord and you're still talking about his goodness. And even, even to go through the Bible and be like, Hey, here's these plagues and they're horrible and they're awful, but look at the glory of God. Like even to find revelation, in the word about the situation you're going to like the waiting is not worthless. Like no. I think so many people just skip through the waiting yeah. and they're like, Oh, I'm pregnant or Oh, I had the husband or Oh. And like this podcast isn't about you rejoicing over God answering the things. Yes, that is a part mm-hmm. of it. And that is incredible, but it's also about you learning to, to um, trust God yeah. in the waiting and you allowing God to be God. And so I just want to point that out because I think that is what I've seen as the most amazing thing about, one of the most amazing things about you because I got to walk through this next season of waiting with you. And even though you were sad and even though you were so desiring this child, you still praise the Lord. You still led worship at church. You led worship at conferences. You prayed over other people who were pregnant. You were rejoiced for them, even though it was hard. Like, I'm not saying it wasn't hard, yeah. but like you praise God through the whole thing. And I think that's a testament. And that's something that I would challenge the listener to. It's like, don't just wait till you get it, you know, to praise God, mm-hmm. like praise him through the valleys. Cause like, I've seen you get to know God in a whole new way mm-hmm. that maybe you would have never before had you not gone through this time. Um, I just think that's really cool. Okay, so let's go into the pregnancy. <laughs> so let's go all the way back to when you open up to us about it at Bible study. Yeah. So at that point, you know, you were like, this is really hard. Yeah. Can y'all pray for me? Mm-hmm. Um, and what did just that journey kind of look like as y'all were as y'all were waiting for a baby? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was a different kind of wait than I'd been through um, because I've always known I wanted to be a mom. And I think that's like something that a lot of people, we have that desire. God built yeah. us with that desire. And so um, when we eased into it, when we started off, I was like, I know that this could be a possibility. It's, ha- it's possible that we won't get pregnant easily. Um, but it really is so hard because that's something your heart desires and you're created to desire. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had to learn early on. I was like, okay, I'm in this waiting season. How am I going to wait? Yeah. Um, we get the choice, like how we're going to wait. And that sounds silly, but we do, we get to choose. Are we going to wait with hope? Mm -hmm. Are we going to wait, um, with self pity and drown ourselves in the sorrow and, um, not let anything happen from it because you can either use it to glorify God and to praise him and to Mm -hmm. see him in a whole new light, or you can slip into this darkness. Mm -hmm. Um, but like you said earlier, that's what the devil wants is for us to slip into the darkness. Um, so early on, I chose that I was going to just rejoice and praise God through each moment, knowing that he had a plan that he was leading to. It wasn't always easy. And there was definitely times that I did not do a good job of this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm so glad that I made the choice early on because um, I got to see God in a whole new light. That's awesome. um, and that's something even I had to change my prayers. Like when I was praying at first, I was like, God, I want this baby. Like, I want this now. This is when I want. This is my timeline. This is how things need to happen. And then I got to thinking and I'm like, okay, 
I want this baby, but do I want this baby more than I want God? Mm. Um, and I had to start changing my prayers to be, wow. um, God, I want this baby. Give me this baby to God. I want you. Wow. And when I, my prayers changed and I started praying that, even though it was hard and I was scared to pray that. Cause I'm yeah. like, I still want this baby. Yeah. But when I started praying that my whole spirit and everything about me just changed and I started wow. seeing the good, not just the bad. Yeah. Summer so far has been one of my favorites, especially with Honey walking, talking, and doing all the things. That girl is on the go, y'all, between getting ready for the LO Sister Conference that's just a few weeks away and a few other projects that I can't spoil yet. Sleep is so important to me so I can get full energy so that I can be there for my honey girl and get my work done. Recently, Christian and I have uh, made the switch to Miracle Sheets, and y'all, it is a game changer. When me, Christian, Honey, and Cabo all pile into the same bed, it can get a little bit hot real quick, which is one of the main reasons why I love Miracle Sheets because they have a self-cooling property that is awesome. These sheets are designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long, so you already know you're going to get some real good sleep. And like I said, the whole family piles in sometimes, so it's nice to have something that cools us down. The other night, Honey had uh, spilled something, which doesn't really shock me because she's a one-year-old, but what did shock me was how clean it looked after because Miracle Sheets are also self-cleaning. They use natural silver-infused fabric developed by NASA. Okay, so that's pretty legit, and it helps keep them clean and fresh for up to three times longer than any other sheets, and they prevent 99.9% .9 of bacterial growth. So who doesn't love not having Having to change your sheets so often. I mean, I think we all could appreciate that. When it comes to sleep, I can honestly be quite picky because of how my sheets feel. You know, I mean, that does impact the way you sleep, but Miracle Sheets are the softest sheets ever, which makes sense because they are made of one of the highest quality cottons in the world. Not only are they incredibly soft, but these sheets are great for your skin too because they have a self-cleaning property, like I mentioned. I know what you're probably thinking that these sheets are so expensive, but Miracle Sheets actually does not have the high price tag that a lot of other sheets have, which is also a game changer. You can get started now with 25% off of a premium subscription by downloading the Abide app uh, at abide.co slash Sadie. You'll get an additional stories and meditations, premium music, soothing sounds, and more. Support this show and get 25% off by going to abide.co slash Sadie. That's abide, A-B-I-D-E dot co, C-O slash Sadie to download the Abide app and get 25% off your premium subscription. I remember even when I was dating Christian and there was a time in our relationship where we were six months in, already said we love each other, already did love mm -hmm. each other. And I was like nervous that like, is he really the one? And I prayed this prayer and I was like, God, like I love this person, yeah. but I love you more. Yeah. And like, and if you say this is not a person, I will surrender this. But even in saying that, I was like, but I mean, I really would yeah. like for this to <laughs> be like, true. <laughs> But, but truly, like, yeah. but truly believing the words I was saying, if it's not right, I'd rather your plan, yeah. you know? And, like, it's really hard and it hits different when it's something right before you that you want so badly, yeah. you know? Um, like, you really wanted this baby. Yeah. I really wanted him to be my husband. Uh, but, but more than that, I wanted God's will for my life. Yes. Because I trust and know God's will is perfect yeah. for my life and it's so good for my life. Right. It's not like I'm like, oh, well, I'm saying this because I have to mm -hmm. because God is supposed to be number one. It's because when God is number one, my life is good. Yes. Like when you see that equation in your life always add up, like when God is my priority, life is good. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that things are going good all the time. That right. doesn't mean that the baby is always going to come or the husband is always going to come or whatever. But it does mean that God's faithfulness yes. is there, which means his peace is there, yes. which means his love is there and his joy is there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I desire that's over right. all things. Because you can essentially have the things that life has to give and be missing the true things that matter, yes. like love, joy, peace, like the, the nature of who God is. But when you have him and you have that, that's when life is full. Absolutely. Um, so as y'all were getting to the end of the waiting period, uh, y'all had a lot of God winks. Mm -hmm. So you just got to start. You can start anywhere, but I love the one. Obviously, we can go to the ladybug direction. Yes. Okay, we got to go ladybug direction. And then you have to go to you and Luke praying and worshiping. Yes. That is so cool. Okay. But the ladybugs is so cool. So I'll just set this up from my perspective. Um, like I said, we had been, she had been waiting for a while. We were talking about it a lot. It was like always kind of a point of conversation for us. And we had another friend who was actually also waiting for a baby in our Bible study who mm -hmm. did get pregnant eventually. And she gave Elise some advice like, hey, right before I got pregnant, God was giving me, 
these like red birds wasn't yes, it red, red birds? birds and she was like and every time i see a red bird i was just so reminded that like god is thinking about me like god god's doing something god's in this and so lisa's telling me about this and then you gotta tell the rest of the story yeah it was crazy because when she told me this i was like that is so cool and like i know that this is the same god now as he was you know in all the bible stories and everything so i know he can do those things and i know he gives me god wings but i was like that is awesome i'm so glad she got red birds but like i probably won't i don't know maybe i will like that'd be cool um and i remember it was the end of November of last year, and we were, Luke and I were outside decorating for Christmas, and all of a sudden, a ladybug, like, flew up and landed on my arm, and I've seen ladybugs my whole life, but in that moment, I was just like, God sent me that. Wow. And it was kind of weird, and I was like, I mean, I think, but like, yeah. it wasn't even, it just, I knew, I was like, that was from the Lord, yeah. and so I was like, there it is, that's my ladybug. And so, from then on, I started seeing them everywhere, every single day, I would see them at, um, school I would where I teach I'm a teacher so I'd see them in my classroom never seen them there I'd see them at friends houses that I'd go to we were at a camp a deer camp and I've been out there plenty of times never seen ladybugs and I had just told Sadie about this I, I just for some reason opened up to her and told her I've been seeing time, ladybugs she was like, uh, Morgan told me about seeing red birds all of a sudden ladybugs are showing up I just feel like God's in it I was like wow that's crazy that's so cool and then literally we moved from the couch to go eat dinner and something like flew and hit me in the face I'm like, yeah. Ooh, that was weird and we sat down and then I see, we see ladybug yep. on the table, and I was like, oh, that must have been what just hit me. That's crazy. We just talked about ladybugs, and we looked up, and on the ceiling, no lie, there was like 15 ladybugs. I have like, a picture of it, yeah. It was, we were screaming. We were like, oh my <laughs> gosh, because like, y'all go to the camp all the time, yeah. and there's not ladybugs yeah. out there, and right after she told me, the Lord is sending ladybugs, like, I just feel like some, like it's something's happening, like yeah. something is shifting. Yeah. There's 15 ladybugs o- above our head. Yes. So that happens, and then a month later, a month goes by from the moment that you told me that we see the ladybugs at the camp and then you're this was now christmas yes yeah. okay so start with christmas yes this is crazy so right before then i kind of got curious and i look, decided to look up what ladybugs mean because i was like maybe there's some kind of significance here and um so that's when i saw that it means bringer of gifts that was one of the definitions wow. and i was like this is crazy that's crazy so I'm thinking, okay, ladybug, bring her gifts. It's making sense, but um, we get close to Christmas, and Christmas Day is actually the earliest day that I could test uh, to see if I was pregnant. And, you know, I've tested many times and got many negatives, and part of me was like, should I test on Christmas? Like, I don't want to be down on Christmas Day. But then I got to thinking, I was like, you know what? If I test negative, like, I still have the greatest gift of all. Like, Mm -hmm. Jesus, like, on Christmas, I get to rejoice in this baby being brought down to earth that's going to save us, you know, that's going to change the world. So whether I have a baby in my belly or whether I have the baby Jesus, like, it's going to be a good day. So I was like, I'm just going to go for it. That's awesome. And so that was just, like, the hope. That was already something like, I know God's with me in this. Mm -hmm. And then um, Christmas Eve, my sister-in-law came over and brought me a gift. I hadn't seen a ladybug yet on this day, so I'm, like, waiting for my ladybug every day. Like, where are you going to be? And I opened it, and it was a stuffed animal ladybug. Wow. And I was just, like, emotional because I'm, like, wow, like, that's cool. Like, this is tangible. Like, I can hold on to this ladybug and give it to whoever my future child may be. So the next morning, I wake up at 4 a.m. I sneak out of bed so Luke will not hear me. I had a test hiding in the bathroom, and I went and I took it. And immediately it popped up positive. Crazy. And I just was like, those ladybugs really were. Like, oh my gosh. It was on insane. Yeah. That is so, crazy. And then Luke woke up and didn't you put it in like the gif where like a watch was yeah. supposed to be? Epic. Yeah. It was like the sweetest video. He just starts like bawling. Yes. Y'all were like, y'all walked it out together yes. like so beautifully. It was so crazy. So that happened. She found out she's pregnant on Christmas, y'all. Yeah. Like, it's just can't crazy. Make that up. How you intentional. You cannot make that up. And we always said the whole time we were like, it is going to be God's perfect yeah. timing because that's that's who God is. Like yeah. He's a God of timing. Like He's so intentional with the timing. And for you to wait, 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 see the ladybugs all month. Tell me about it. We see these fifteen. A month goes by. Your sister in law gives you the ladybug yeah. the night before you wake up the next morning, four a.m. Boom, yeah. positive. Like, it was insane. And then we got to see you shortly after. And she was like, I got a gift for you. And I was like, oh, shoot, I should have got a gift for you. I'm sorry. (laughs) Like, dang it. And we're back at the camp. And, like, I was, like, 
because I knew at this point you would have either started your period or you were pregnant. Yeah. But like, whenever you're walking through that with a friend, like you never want to ask. Like, like it's hard to ask because one, if I ask you if you're pregnant, maybe you want to tell me a specific way. Two, if I ask you if you start your period, it could be really sad. Right. But I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. So it's like, hey, so like, <laughs> did you ever like start? And she's like, I know I'm supposed to start Tuesday, but it was Tuesday, <laughs> and she was like, I was like, you go wait, is today Tuesday? I was like, yeah, <laughs> and then you're like. Oh, and so then you were like, awkward. change the subject. I got you a gift. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's so sweet. Sorry. And I open this gift, and it's the ladybug yeah. that her sister in law just got her with the positive prejudice. Yeah. I flipped <laughs> out. I was like, no we did. way. It was just amazing. It and is. That's just like so fun because you really did walk it out with the Lord the whole mm-hmm. time, and you brought people in. And that was really cool because when you brought people in, all your people got to rejoice with yes. you, and we all got to see God be yeah. God. And so, man, like, there is this temptation when you're in the waiting season to not let anybody see it. Not not let anybody in because it's hard because yeah. you don't want that to be happening but when you let your people in one people can pray with you yeah. people can believe with you all that kind of stuff people can be there when it is hard people can be there with you you know when it when it's good but the rejoicing yeah. that was around y'all was Man. it was so cool like seeing all of your friends reactions it was really really yeah. neat and uh, it was so sweet you got to tell your parents on Christmas Day. We did. With the lady. You got to tell about your mom's gift. I do. I have to tell them about the mom's gift. And then my favorite part of all comes after, like three months later. Wow. Um, So that day we went to my parents and I was like, I just got to tell them like it's Christmas. I have to. And so I used the ladybug. um, But before I opened my gift, we opened presents in random order. So it wasn't like we planned out when to open what. And I opened the gift that my mom got me. And I hadn't received, I had received my ladybug in my belly, obviously my baby, but I hadn't received or seen a ladybug that day. And, um, I opened it and it was an ornament with a ladybug that said 2022. Oh my God. So I started sobbing and my mom's like, wow, she really likes this ornament. (laughs) And, but she didn't realize that she's about to find out that like, yeah, it was true. Like I got my ladybug. So that was such a special moment. And she ended up opening the gift that told her next. It was crazy. Um, so that was such an awesome moment. But my favorite is three months later. I don't even know if you knew this part. I don't know if I do. Okay, this is the best part of the whole story, I feel like. Um, My mom, I went over to my mom's house, and she had been in the attic. Mm. And she comes down. Oh, you did too. Okay, yeah. This is, like, my favorite. And she said, hey, I was looking for baby stuff, and I came across something that was yours when you were a baby, like, born. And I was like, okay, like, cool. What was it? I didn't know if it was just, like, clothes. Yeah. Um, And she pulls out a ladybug piggy bank. And it's just insane to me because in that moment, I was like, God knew Mm. from the moment that I was born when I was a baby that he was one day going to use ladybugs to bring me my baby. And when I think about that, I'm like, how silly is it that all that time I could have questioned God and said, God, you're not here. You're not answering my prayer. You're not doing these things. Like, why aren't you, why are you making me wait? Like so many people don't have to wait, but the whole entire time, he was being that intentional that he was wow. going to choose to use a ladybug. Hmm. Like he picked a ladybug specifically that wow. was my when I was a child. And just to see that he really was intentional the whole entire time. Wow. Like he did care, but he knew that I would see him wow. so much more through this and that I would be able to glorify his name That's because so of this. Good. And, you know, it just it makes emotional sometimes because I think we can question God and wonder, are you there, God? Are you even listening? Are you caring? Mm. And he is, but he has something so much better. Yeah, so much better. And so now I get to have that piggy bank in her room. And it's just, it's the coolest thing ever. That is the coolest (laughs) thing ever. That makes me emotional. I have like chills. Like, (laughs) it's just the Lord is all over that. And and you you could have missed it though. Like if you didn't, if you didn't seek the Lord in it, I don't think you would have seen like how intentional God was being this whole time. Like you said, you had to have a shift about a year before that went from, I want my baby, I want my baby to God. I want you and then you did get the baby but you got so much of him so much, so much of him. him and it's so cool like in Jeremiah when it says before I formed you I knew <laughs> you and so to think about like before your baby was formed God knows your baby but he also knows you yeah. and knew you before you were formed and he had this intentional gift for you mm-hmm. that was going to be a generational thing like it's just I mean, it's it's wild. It's like, when you open your eyes to see God for yep. God, He will blow you away. Absolutely. Um, one thing I love about your story, too, is that 
Um, it continues. I mean, here you are. You're what eight months pregnant? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. It's just so <laughs> almost crazy. there. We're really yeah. getting there. But what's so cool about it too is that a lot of people, I think, when they get the thing, then it's like the God story stops. Mm-hmm. But the God story for you continues. Yeah. And I just love that you have walked out this pregnancy with um, just so much goodness of the Lord and sharing that and being faithful that even your Instagram post the other day about what you put over Everly's uh, crib is just so sweet. Sorry, I just said the baby's name. It's okay. It's okay. I'm like, oh, yes, should we cut that Everly. out? Everly is just so beautiful. Yeah. I love her name so much. I love that from the minute you told us her name, like we call her by name yes. too. Like she's, she's there, she's you know, name. but over Everly's crib, like you've been so intentional. Tell us about that. Like what you put over her crib and yeah. why that was important to you. Yeah. Um, I think it's easy, and I try to be so careful with this. Like, now that I got the answer to the prayer, it doesn't mean mean that my communication with God needs to stop. And, like, I don't have to be that deep in prayer, and I don't have to have these. I mean, I can still continue to get these moments from the Lord Mm -hmm. and give Him the glory. Um, And one of my biggest things that I do, the way I express myself, is writing. Mm. And so when I write, the whole time that I was struggling to get pregnant or any waiting season, I have so many journals, and I have a prayer journal. And so I just write down my prayers. Um, and so I've been able to go back through all the prayers that I prayed for her over the whole entire process. And as I was doing that, I was like, man, I just want something to have significance, um, in her nursery. Like I'm just a sentimental person. Like I'm cheesy about everything. (laughs) I make all these long posts. Like that's just who I am. I love it. Um, and I got to thinking, I was like, what better thing? Like I've seen God answer so many prayers. Um, what better thing than to have, um, hanging over her every single day, Mm then the prayers were praying over her life. So good. And so we have two big gold frames, and um, I wrote a prayer, and then my husband Luke wrote a prayer. Mm. And then we blew them up into poster size, and That's they're awesome. hanging over her crib. So good. Because now I've seen God answer so many prayers, um, maybe in ways that I expected, maybe in ways I didn't, mm. but He always answers them. Yeah. And um, now I'll get to look at that every single day and pray them over her and watch them be answered so as she grows. Good. So, and so cool. I just I never want to forget that God is the reason yes. for all of this yes. and to continue to pray to him and to continue to give him glory. And to let her know that. Like yeah. she'll get to see that and be like, whoa, I was so cared for before yeah. I was even born. Like yeah. I've been so prayed for like, my whole life has been established on this and it inspired me. Christian and I wrote prayers for Honey when we were um, on our baby moon and yeah. we like both wrote it out and I'm like, man, I want to I want to print that out yeah. like and just have that and so she can see that because it's already crazy like before we knew Honey, like we just knew she was in my belly and we were writing out these prayers and, like we were getting pretty specific with like characteristics of who she would be. Yeah. And it wasn't like, oh, this is who we want you to be. It was like, this is who we know you yeah. are. Like it was so mm-hmm. weird. And now even seeing those prayers, like it is Honey James. Like wow. that is her. Like it is crazy. And so the things that we were like prophesying over her is who she is. And maybe it was God just letting us know that. Mm-hmm. Like you just know your baby yeah. in a way that you can't really explain, but I'm like, I want to do that. I want to print that out because it was just so cool. And that was just such a good thing. Lastly, I just want to talk to you about, because there was a moment, I I remember it briefly, where there was like a worship moment between you and Lou. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about that because there are hard moments of it. You know, like there are moments where you get frustrated and there are moments where the waiting, you're like, okay, for real, like what's going to happen? Yeah. And this is just such a beautiful moment of you two coming together because you know, like I said, the temptation is to do it alone, but what does it look like when you come together and the power of that? So can you touch on that story? Yes, absolutely. I'm so grateful for this moment. Um, so definitely were some hard times and this may seem like what I'm talking about seems like all good, but I had some low points and there was this one night where I was just down in my feelings and I was kind of taking out on Luke. Um, I wasn't being very nice and I was just letting the self-pity take over. I was Mm -hmm lay in the bed and I decided of all things to go on social media, which, you know, it yep. can be great, but it can also make things worse Especially for comparison. Especially when you're in that moment. Yes. When you're like, you think you're just going to numb, but actually like the numbing, I talked about this recently, the numbing is not resting. Like the numbing no. does not make you feel rejuvenated. No. A lot of times it brings you down even further. Right. Right. And so that's kind of where I got. I started just getting lower and lower. And I know I knew that I wasn't being how I should to Luke. He didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. He just was kind of taking the backlash of it. And so um, he just kind of removes himself from the the room and he uh, goes to his little hunting room, which is also where he does his Bible study. Mm So I'm laying in bed and I'm just scrolling social media and I hear worship music turn on and I'm like, okay, he's back there doing his Bible study. (laughs) And so I'm being bitter and I'm like knowing that's what I should be doing right now too. But I kind of just wanted to sulk. 
And so I kept hearing the music, and then I felt like God started speaking to me, and he was like, go pray with him. And I was like, mm, no. I'm good. <laughs> but it was like, I clearly knew that's what God was telling me, was yeah. to go pray with him. And I was even thinking, Luke's not going to want to pray with me right now. Like, I was just rooting for no reason. But finally, after, I mean, it took me probably at least five minutes. And then I finally got up. I was like, okay. So I slowly walk across the house and I opened the door and I didn't really know what to say at first because I still felt bad. And he has his music on shuffle, his worship music. And I remember talking to Jesus was on. um, And so all I knew to say was, I was like, do you want to talk to Jesus together? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's so cute. He looks at me, and he could have easily just said, like, no, like, we need to just take time. Like, I need to just do this on my own. But he said yes. And so he, like, looks at me, and I said, and I normally don't say this, but I was like, do you want to kneel by the bed and pray together? And so once again, he says yes. And um, I remember this so vividly because one of my our favorite songs or one of the songs that, like, when it came on, we always just, like, saying, you know, super loud and just declared, uh, was, I'm going to wait on you, um, Maverick City. Mm -hmm. And that's our song. And so we got up and we were walking over to the bed and one song ended. And this is like hundreds of song on shuffle. And as soon as our knees hit the ground, I'm going to wait on you started playing. (laughs) And we both just started bawling because we were like, wow there's God right there. Like, again, I could have missed that. I could have kept scrolling on my phone and like, and there's nights that I did do that. I'm not saying there's definitely nights that I did not do what I should have done. But in that moment, God wanted to show me like, I'm still right here and I'm still walking with you and it's going to be okay. And I will fulfill my promises in the way I see best fit. Yeah. Um, but we got to experience that together. And so, so then when good. we were praying, we had that in the background and we knew like, God, you're faithful. You're going to answer these wow. prayers. It was just a powerful moment. That is so yeah. cool. I love it. There's just so much to be said about everything you just shared. But I, I think one thing that sticks out the most is just your eyes to see him, you know, your eyes to see Jesus and your heart to seek him, seeing him and seeking him. Yeah. Like they go hand in hand and man, it, it made the story so much different. Your story could have been marked by the the length of time you didn't get pregnant. You know, your story could have been marked by your mom not getting healed. Your story could have been marked by um, a bad relationship, but your story is marked by the goodness of God. Mm-hmm. And that is incredible. And so y'all, I know y'all have learned so much today <laughs> from this podcast. Gosh, I just encourage you um, right now, before you move on to your next thing, whether you're walking on the treadmill or riding in your car, are sitting in your dorm or wherever you are and wherever you're listening to this maybe you're sitting with your husband maybe you are listening to this together just take a minute and posture your heart towards the lord one thing at least did the whole time was she journaled her prayers and it has been so cool as a friend to get to see her look back from start to finish and see the hard moments and see the good moments see the moments that she was waiting and see the moments that the lord responded to the specific prayers she prayed and the specific things that the lord did in response so i just encourage you get with the lord maybe write out your prayers maybe it's your first time to do that Maybe just pray out loud and let God hear, you know, the things that you're saying. Maybe it's your moment to say, you know, I've been praying this way, but God, now I just want you. Just let yourself go there and have this moment. If this encouraged you or you know a friend going through it, send it along to your friends Send the link. It's always good to pass on good news. And we're just so thankful uh, for all of our sisters and friends listening and hope that in the waiting, you can just see God's goodness and praise him no matter if you have the answer or not. And then when you get it, to continue walking out that faithfulness to him. Love you guys. Hope you have a great rest of your week and thanks for listening.